If physics has taught us one thing, it's that nature's a mathematician. But she's picky and uses only some maths. Why this maths and not any other? A group of researchers has found some intriguing regularities in the mathematics of physical laws that might bring us a step closer to finding out. Before we talk about maths, a big thank you to our supporters on Patreon, especially those of you in Tier 4 and higher. On our Patreon, you'll get the full transcripts with links to all sources, so have a look. Every little bit helps. We often speak of mathematics as a language, but it's not like any other language. In any language besides mathematics, words refer to something else, to reality, or at least our ideas of reality, which I'd argue are also reality. But mathematics is entirely self-referential. It doesn't refer to anything besides itself. That's for what pure mathematics is concerned, but when we look at the mathematics in physics, it again becomes a language of something. It becomes the language we use to describe our observations. So why this particular math? Spoken languages are known to follow certain regularities. The most famous one is Zipf's law. It says that there is a regular decrease in the frequency of words. If you assign each word a number, the most frequent word is number one, the second most frequent word number two, and so on, then you find a regular decay of the frequency with their assigned number, or more technically a power law. This is Zipf's law. This law has been found in text bodies in pretty much all known languages, and while there are some differences between languages, they clearly all have a lot of regularity. Just why that is so, scientists haven't yet figured out. Linguists speculate that it may be the most efficient way of communicating information, which you'll immediately understand if I repeat that it may be the most efficient way of communicating information if I repeat the relevant information. Somewhat off topic, but there are speculations that this is the reason why the knowledge increase in large language models slows down following similar power laws. That language has these regularities also raises the question of whether we have something like that in the language of mathematics that we use for the laws of nature. The authors of the new paper studied this question by taking apart the syntax of equations into mathematical objects operations. For example, addition and multiplication, or taking the second or third power. They also included multiplication with a constant of nature and more complex functions like an exponential function or trigonometric functions. They then counted the frequencies by which these appear in three different samples. The Feynman Lectures of Physics, a Wikipedia list with equations, and a paper called the Encyclopedia Inflationaris, lists a lot of models for inflation, so a lot of equations. What they find is that the frequency of mathematical expressions does follow a law, but it's not the same as in languages. It's not a power law decay, it's an exponential decay. And it's surprisingly regular despite the actually quite small samples. This is very intriguing. Where do these regularities come from? There are two possibilities. One is that this tells us something about the mathematics which appears in the laws of nature. The other is that it tells us something about the way that we use this mathematics. These possibilities are not mutually exclusive, and I suspect that the right answer is a mix of both. The human contribution is that we tend to rewrite equations in ways that we find easy to decipher just by looking at them. A computer might not care, for example, if you factorize terms. We do it because it makes it easier to see what's going on. It's a similar thing when it comes to why the powers of quantities in our laws are mostly integers. There's nothing preventing us from defining a unit for the pith root of energy, except, you know, sanity, or the risk that it'll make every physics class spontaneously combust. So there is clearly a human element in this, which is simplification to a notation that we're used to dealing with. But that leaves the question of why the laws are so that these simplifications work. I think there are some deeper truths to be found there. For example, that we very rarely have fractional powers of quantities probably tells us something about the origin of dimensionful units. 
It's also a curious fact that in physics, we usually don't have more than two time derivatives. There is no deeper reason for why that should be the case, except that it doesn't describe what we see. Physicists are so used to this, I think that they, for the most part, don't even think about it anymore. But it's a curious example of this math and not another that makes me think we're missing some underlying structure. Or maybe the universe is just trolling us. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.